Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and today what we're going to look at is how to use um, Apollo in React uh, to do some GraphQL queries, but we're going to convert it to use hooks. So hooks were announced, um, I don't know, maybe a month ago now, and they sort of come with a few standard ones, uh, use state, use effect. But one of the great things about them is that you can build your own custom hooks on top of it. And I found that using React Apollo with hooks is amazing. It's so much easier than using the query and mutation components. And I'm just going to quickly show how to convert from using uh, the query component to using hooks with Apollo. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your app is on the latest version of React, which supports hooks. Um, right now I'm using 16.7.0 alpha 2 so this is in alpha uh, so be be wary of that as you're as you're writing this code think about whether you want to try it in production or not yet but um, I found it works pretty good so far so with that in mind I'll just quickly show the app that we're working with we're pulling some repositories down through the github GraphQL API that I have starred so if we come in here and look at the app component uh, we've got this uh, component start repos, and if we go into that, this is where we have, we're pulling in our query from React Apollo, and we're writing our query here to go pull down the start repositories from uh, GraphQL. If you're interested in how I set up the Apollo client and whatnot for connecting to GitHub, I have another video that I'll link to in the notes for this one. Uh, that's all over here in the, in the Apollo client. Back to here. Okay, so we're pulling down the start repositories and we're doing that right now using the query component. So we've got our query component and we give it the query along with any variables it needs to perform this query. And then as in is typical with this query component, you have to give it a render prop, a function that uh, gets nested inside. And this um, function receives data and loading that we're going to use. So if we are loading still, we're just going to return a little span that says loading. So if I refresh here, you can see for a, for a half a second, you see loading. And then when it gets rendered again, this time we'll have the data so we can walk the data structure to where, the, where we get to the repositories and we can map them and then render a repository component for each of them. Um, I'll publish all this code so you can take a look at the repository component or any other ones you wanna look at in this demo. Okay, so what we're gonna start with is including the package that allows us to do hooks with React Apollo. So it's React Apollo hooks named easy enough and we're gonna add that to our code here. So we'll just add that and then we'll start up our app again. There we go. So we'll just uh, start that. And we'll come back and the first change we're gonna make is in our app. So here is where we have our Apollo provider. So typically you put the provider as high in your component tree as possible so that you can use, um, you have access to Apollo the whole way down through your, through your tree. So what we need to do is import Apollo provider as, uh, we're just gonna call it something else so we don't have a name collision. Apollo provider hooks from React Apollo hooks. So now that we've imported that, we'll just nest this inside of our actual Apollo provider and we'll also pass the same client to this one. Okay, so we've got that wrapped around. So at this point, we're not yet using hooks, but um, it should still all work correctly without errors. We can just look in the console to make sure. Yep. Okay, so now we can use hooks. So we're gonna go back to our starred repositories, uh, which is brought in here. I have a little bit of logic here. Uh, you can only query the GitHub API if you have an access token. So I'm just checking, do I have a token? If so, I can 
query that. I can render this component, otherwise I show a little form asking for the token. So we will go look at start repos, and here is where we get to simplify things a ton. So the first thing we want to do is we can actually get rid of this query because we're not going to use it anymore. And instead, we're going to import a function called useQuery from uh, React Apollo hooks. Okay. So I'm actually just going to start writing a whole new component above here, and we'll copy up logic from, from down here below. It's probably a bit cleaner to do it that way. So what we're going to do is create a new functional component this time. So we're not going to use a class. So we'll export default function starred repos and actually not return yet. Okay, so we're going to get an error because I'm exporting two defaults, but that's fine for now. So the first thing we want to do is call our use query function. So what we'll do is we'll say const, and because I know we get back data and loading, we'll say data loading equals use query. And here's where we want to pass in the query that we want to perform. And at this point, we can also pass in our variables. So the variables, and we're just passing in that we want to receive back 25 repos. Okay, I'm actually just going to comment this out so that I get code formatting. Cool. All right, so right below here, we can now check this loading variable. So we can say, if loading, we just wanted to return that span, right? So we can just copy this code here. So now below, we know that it's not loading anymore and we have some data. So we can just come and copy this return statement here to loop through our data viewer starred repositories nodes and mapping each of those repository nodes to get an array of repositories. And uh, it's as easy as that. So we'll load the page and, oh crap. All right, so I knew this error was gonna happen. <laughs> All right, so it's saying that um, we have an error because this hooks library expects a suspense component to be wrapping it so that it can handle sort of the loading state and what to show to the user um, if it's taking a long time to perform the query via the suspense component rather than explicitly having to deal with it here in loading. So there's a couple ways we can solve this. One is you can just pass a variable suspend false, basically just telling it don't use suspend, so I'm gonna deal with this on my own. So now it's loading again, and um, we're just dealing with it ourselves. But let's take a look at what it would look like to use suspend instead. So I'm gonna get rid of this, and I need to go up a level so that I can wrap this repository here in a suspense component. So the first thing I need to do is I need to import that component from React, and then I can wrap it around here. So suspense, like that. And what you need to give to suspense is what to show if it's taking a long time to load. So in this case, uh, the fallback, what to display. So here we can easy enough just do a span, and we can just, to say something different, say suspense loading here. So if I come back here, reload, you can see for a second, it's actually being handled by suspense loading instead of our if statement back here. So to me, that says we don't even really need this if statement. We'll let suspend handle everything for us. So there we go, suspense is loading. And then once it's loaded, we're showing it. So I forget how many lines our component was bef before, but it was definitely more than eight lines of code. So as you can see, using um, the use query hook made our code so much cleaner and easier to work with. 
And it's even more pronounced if you say also had a, a, a mutation in the same component. You know how like nested it gets. You've got like mutation, render prop function, query, render prop function, and it just gets like a ridiculous Christmas tree. So this makes your code so much easier to work with. Um, and that's that. So that was the video and what I wanted to cover today. Um, give it a try. Again, the library is called React Apollo Hooks. And it's got a couple um, hooks that you'll want to use, namely the uh, use query, use mutation. And I think there's one more called um, use Apollo client when you just simply want access to the Apollo client. So there's no need to sort of do a decorator or yeah, wrap it in a function or anything like that anymore. You can just use this hook. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Bye.